In this video, I'd like to show you how I made this Colograph print made out of two plastic plates. So this Colograph um, has been made out of two plastic plates, uh, one which was the intaglio um, dark outlines and shadows, and one was used just purely for monotype. And what I'm going to show you in this video is how I created these two plates, and this is the um, intaglio plate, as I mentioned, and this is my monotype plate. And you can just about see the sort of outlines, but I will show you in details on, on, in, on how I achieved the result. Um, I also wanted to show you my creative process and how I got from a picture I took in Peak District to where my design ended up and who inspired me to create this abstract composition. I ended up with two prints. I've only done two prints of this. And as you can see, they're not hugely different, but they have some aspects I like of this print and some aspects of that. But I think in general, I prefer this one. So here I wanted to discuss some happy accidents that happened during my work. I wasn't really paying much attention on my first print. And as you can see, uh, it ended up being in a very wrong place on the, on the paper. And the reason why it's happened is because I forgot to trap my paper in my printing press after the very first print has gone through. And so also I forgot to do register marks for my actual paper size. So despite the fact that it has gone a little bit wrong with where it is, it doesn't really matter. I'm not too bothered about it because I can frame it with um, mount board and it's going to be absolutely fine. And with this one, well, even though I did trap my paper in the right place, for some reason, I just didn't get them aligned very well. However, I really like that. Um, I kind of like that it went a bit wrong. And, well, it's kind of convenient uh, because I have no choice about it now. But I think if I framed it, I would have probably included the mistake in it. I wouldn't cut it out because I quite like what's happened here. And I wanted to just to discuss what um, I like about the two prints and what I'm really happy with. So you can see this texture in the middle. And as you will see in my video, it was on my monoprint plate that I placed a piece of scrunched up tissue. As you can see, got these really interesting marks. Uh, so it was scrunched up tissue and I put it across my plate, dabbed it and it just peeled it off. So it took a bit of paint off, but it left some very interesting patterns. In my clouds, I had a blue paint on top of the plate, plastic plate, and I took a piece of card and I white scratched off a bits of paint and I had some paint to build up. Um, here, as you can see, like an almost overspill. But it looks great because it's sort of supposed to be a cloud and it gives that impression of dark area around the cloud. Um, so this was achieved, this sort of dark area was achieved by painting acrylic matte medium on my plastic plate, as well as these areas here. And it's given me this really interesting transparent look. I think this might have even been painted on with a paintbrush. So this transparent look is what I was looking for. And these very delicate dark lines are so uh, great um, and easy to achieve with plastic plate where you just use dry point needle to scratch them out. Also these, these have been wiped off and didn't trap ink too much. If I wanted to trap 
ink a lot more, I would use car carborandum or even a plastic tape. But I wanted to have this sort of painterly, semi-transparent feel. Um, in this print, when I first printed it, I wasn't very happy. I thought I didn't wipe off enough ink here. And as a result, I got this really sort of blurred, weird line. But I'm not really sure if I'm too worried about it now. I think I quite like these sort of very harsh, dark lines. It gives it a, a slightly different mood from the, the more delicate uh, lines and feel of this print. So both of them have their own ups and downs. But overall result, I think, is great. Um, so if you want to give this sort of technique a go, it's so much fun. Happy accidents uh, can happen and, well, it's just experimenting and seeing how, how it will work out. When I did my first design on an iPad, I had no idea how, you know, I didn't know I was going to have this lighter area here but it just felt like I needed to break it up it was all a little bit too horizontal and I just needed something to break it up and it gives that impression of reflective water which was part of the original picture so here is uh, my abstract landscape and I might do more to it maybe not uh, my next video will show you my next um, artwork, my next print from the Peak District um, series. Hope you enjoy it. So here is the original inspiration for my print and well it doesn't really look anything like my print but it was just a starting point and what really I love about this is there's a lot of movement going on and a lot of interesting lines. So I took a really long time creating my own interpretation of what is happening here. So I kind of drew some shapes that I thought might be really interesting to create sort of more abstract composition. Um, I went through several different processes and who knows, I might uh, even create prints with these ideas. But what I've ended up with for now is this. So I took the main ideas of my photograph and sort of worked from there. Some of the bits that I liked, some that I didn't. And I guess what I didn't like about the original photo, I didn't like this line. It, it was too sort of divisive. There was, I quite like this kind of area here, this triangle, and I, as you can see, I sort of painted in it. There was something interesting going on here, and I love this movement here. So I, I kept the bits that I found interesting and and decided to, to stick with this. And I chose two colours, really, uh, blue and green. And I decided to, um, I thought about it a lot, how I was going to appro approach the print. I wanted some painterly feeling to it. I wanted some movement. I wanted some lighter and darker areas. So this is why monoprint came very handy. But also I wanted these dark areas, these um, almost inky like addition to the, the composition. And what inspired me to, to create something like this was an author, sorry, no, an author, it, uh, an artist, a quite not very well-known artist, Cumbrian artist called Percy Kelly. And he was a mainly watercolorist, so he wasn't a printer. But I do love how he approached landscape. And he was my inspiration to create something like this. Um... So this is my creative process and this is how I came to this final design. And now I'm going to show you 
step by step how I got to it. So here is my um, collagraph plate and I am just drawing out on the other side with a permanent marker where all my um, dry point needle marks are going to be as well as my dark areas where I'm going to apply acrylic medium which hopefully will trap enough ink um, to create all the desired shadows in the right places. And here, as you can see, I'm starting to um, use my dry point needle to mark all the lines I have previously drawn out on the other side of the plate. Um, and depending how thick I want the lines to be, I, that's how much pressure and how much I go over it. And here is my magic ingredient, uh, acrylic matte media, which I love using. Uh, for creating mid-tones in my collagraphs. Um, so this is where I fill in all the darker areas that I'm hoping that it's, that are going to give me those inky, transparent um, shadows in my final print. So what's really cool about this as well is that using paintbrush will show brush strokes uh, which will give an extra texture um, to my shadow areas and this is something that I wanted to achieve. Um, so that's another extra benefit of using this acrylic media and a paintbrush. So um, another amazing reason for using uh, Perspex sheets is because I can create a second plate with just overlaying over the next one and because of the, its transparency I can use the design on the original plate um, to draw out where my ink is going to be on the monotype plate which is super useful as a sort of reference point. So as much as I love using Vera board for my collagraphs as well, it's got its, uh, its positive sides too. Um, I do really love Perspex sheets. You can stick things to them, they're transparent, you can paint things on top of them. So, and they are also more durable. Um, so that's another plus point. I think I'm a bit sold on the Perspex sheets. Uh, but I'm sure uh, we'll come back to Invirabord at some point. So here, uh, to be perfectly honest, I didn't really know how to approach this. So I started off with using viscosity technique. So this white ink I'm applying right now with paintbrush has been diluted with a bit of linseed oil. And what I'm doing is I'm going to go over with a roller with blue ink and this slightly more um, runny ink, white ink, is going to repel this blue ink. Uh, which is a great idea. It, you can use viscosity printing for monotype printing. It's brilliant uh, sort of technique uh, for getting overlay of two different inks. Um, but as you will see in a minute, I actually abandoned it, the idea anyway and uh, didn't really use this viscosity technique in, in my final approach. But this is, I'm showing you this anyway because it's really good to know and very useful to use. So here I'm, I'm, I'm adding uh, a bit of green ink 
and um, this is a mixed color. I, I, th I think I mixed uh, black or sepia ink with yellow, primrose yellow. And uh, I'm just applying it with a paintbrush at the moment, uh, but um, sort of mixing it up with the sky. I want my, my inks to blend a little bit and um, meet each other and mix together with sort of roller, with a paintbrush. Um, so I don't have particularly defined colors, color areas. Uh, but that's the idea really um, so this is the way I'm sort of blending the different areas and I have colors repeating in in my design on a different areas of the print and the blue is sort of being applied all over on top of the green as well um, which gives these lovely transparent areas and sort of more of a 3D feel of the print. And here, as you can see, I've decided to go over uh, one more time with the white ink. Um, so yeah, the viscosity ink was still, the, the more viscous ink was still there, but I, I needed to sort of touch it up uh, in the end, which is fine. So this is the fun part. This is where I get my scrunched up tissue and um, in a way peel off a little bit of paint a little bit of ink off the plate um, but this is how I'm, I'm achieving these sort of lighter areas of the design and really like how it, it turns out that's what's so great about monoprinting it's really unexpected what you might end up with and gives you so many different transparencies and in, in interesting texture textures and you can also use inks which are transparent uh, to achieve similar effects but this is what I really love doing because you can get very sharp edges and you can get these um, marks from the slightly ruffled up tissue so here I'd like to talk you through the ink colours that I'm using. I never use colours straight up the tube. I always try to achieve different mixes. And here is my um, linseed oil that I use for making my white ink a little bit more viscous. So time to put my uh, plate through the print press. And here, uh, yep, I haven't registered my paper, so you can see it's very wonky, as I explained earlier. Newsprint on top, and we just, I'm just um, getting it through the press right now. And my favorite time, obviously, revealing the print. So this is the first layer, and I have just realized I really cursed myself for uh, having it so misaligned. But overall result is pretty awesome. I really love um, the colors and how it turned out. So um, here is my um, second part of the print. I am now inking up the um, Colograph plate with some sepia ink which has been mixed up with wiping compound. I mixed it up with wiping compound really to see if it, if it makes it easier to wipe the ink off and it actually did make it a little bit looser so it it was very helpful the ink wasn't as sticky so as you can see it was very easy to wipe it off so I, I wiped it off firstly with just newspaper just very sort of just kind of polished the plate a little bit I didn't want to get too much ink off, so I was just being very careful um, wiping it off. Um, and then to, ha to have slightly lighter areas of um, the plate, I used scrim just to polish it off and, and, and polish up all the really clean white areas. Well, not white areas, but clean areas that where I don't want any dark ink to be.
So I'm finally ready to do my second stage of printing and I haven't trapped my paper, uh, but it's not a total disaster. And I'm trying to align it as best as possible and putting it for the press and hoping for the best. Um, but I will remember for my second print to keep my paper trapped. Anyway, this is the final result. The big reveal. As I can see, I've actually got away with aligning it uh, pretty well. So it's not a complete disaster. And here we go. This is it. Cool, hey? But there's always room for improvement and doing a second print is always really good fun because you've learned from your first print experience and you'll be wiser and you'll be able to experiment a bit more and be braver. So here I'm inking up um, quite quickly because I'm sort of being a bit bolder here. I know what I'm doing a bit more. I've put my inks on. I'm doing my lighter areas uh, with a tissue paper and scratching the cloud area with a bit of card and then filling in it with white ink. And here is just, I'm just blotting a little bit. Um, so I don't have really thick, a lot of ink, too much ink sort of spilling out when I'm, when I'm printing. And there we go. My second print coming through. Press is getting a little bit hard to turn. And let's have a look. It's really interesting. A lot more going on than the first one. I like that. The tissue paper has given more interesting result. I do like it. So here we go. I've learned from the first one. I know what I'm doing a bit better now. And second time around is always a bit more exciting. So for the second stage, I decided not to use a wiping compound. And well, it's going to be harder to wipe but the, 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 the ink off, but I'm hoping for a bit more detail, sharper edges. I don't want the ink to be sort of too loose and to um, spill out like it did in the other, in the first print. So I decided just to use pure ink with nothing in it. So as you can see, a bit more effort uh, wiping off and I'm using Scrim already um, just to get it clean, just to get the, the ink off. Um, but that's fine. Uh, no, no problem at all. Um, but it's, it's looking quite cool. I like the look of the plate already. It's trapped a little bit more ink. Uh, just to see a bit better, because I always do it on, on top of newspaper, I'm just putting uh, some white plain newsprint. And I'm just touching up here with paintbrush, why not? Because I've decided I want to have slightly darker areas and because the acrylic medium, medium doesn't trap as much ink, ink as I would like, I'm just doing a bit of touch up here so I get more interesting darker shades. And ready for print. I, As you can see I've marked my I've trapped my paper here, so hopefully I'm in the right place, but I still got a little bit wrong, unfortunately. Um, but not to worry. And here we go, the big reveal, looking good. Got a little bit stuck to the plate. It's probably because the ink was a little bit stickier. That's what the wiping compound is good for but it came off pretty well. So yeah, the misplaced plate slightly, but again, very interesting textures, a lot, lot of really good stuff going on. So yeah, thanks guys so much for watching and uh, stay tuned, I'll be publishing more videos and as always, happy printing or, and ask me any questions, always happy to help and answer your queries. Take care, bye.